Google's new Notebook LM feature is actually pretty awesome and might actually be the future of note taking. While it still has a number of issues that I don't like and a couple of features that I wish it had, I can really see the potential in new products like this Google Notebook LM feature. And I'm super excited to see where it's gonna go in the future. So let's dive in and take a deep look at Google Notebook LM and how you can use it in your writing, especially if you are an author of books, uh, which is what most of this channel is about. If you're unfamiliar with this channel, my name is Jason. I'm the nerdy novelist, and this channel is all about writing using the different tools at our disposal, such as AI tools like Google Notebook. I spent several years working at Kindlepreneur doing the exact same sort of thing, working with authors to help them understand just how to write, publish, and market their books. And now I do this full-time through this channel. But if we come to Notebook LM, so the URL is notebooklm.google.com, and when you log in with your Google account, it'll look something like this. And these are a couple of notebooks that I've set up already. You can have uh, several of these. I, I don't actually know if there's a limit. I'm sure there is one, but as far as I'm concerned, Concerned, you can have as many notebooks as you want here. And the idea behind Notebook LM is that you can take basically any document you want and include it as part of this notebook. And then using AI, it's able to automatically know everything that's in that notebook and be able to retrieve information for you. Now it's not perfect and I'll show you why that is in a second, but let's go through and talk about how to create a, a new notebook here. So first I'd select new notebook and you can select sources at this point. The sources can be PDFs, text files, copied text that you've uh, got on your clipboard, uh, even a web page URL, which can be useful if you wanted to add in some uh, web pages here. But what's really useful about this particular product is that you can take Google Doc that you might have available and just upload them here. And I'm gonna select a couple of different uh, documents that I've had recently. These are all related to my the fiction side of my business where I'm creating the shared universe thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and select all of those. One of the limitations that I see here is that it doesn't seem to take uh, spreadsheets. It's only doing the actual documents. And I have a couple of spreadsheets that have important information that I wish it could reference. So that's one feature that I kind of wish it would do at, at some point in the future. Uh, I imagine it's coming, but for now there doesn't seem to be a way to include spreadsheets on here, which to me is an, a big issue. But let's just go with what we have here. So first of all, it creates a notebook guide automatically from scanning through all of the different sources that you put and um, it has like these sources outline an extensive fictional universe based on their theory and legends and mythology and it gives a summary of everything that we've got here it's got suggested questions here which is useful you can create an FAQ a study guide a table of contents a timeline a briefing doc let's try timeline and see what it gives us so it creates a new note here and anytime you want to access that notebook guide again you'll find it here in the bottom right corner and here it's given us a legend, Arthurian legends timeline. And I, I had a lot of this outlined already in those documents. So it's probably pulling from that pretty heavily. It's kind of simple. So uh, maybe not the best thing, but a good attempt. And a lot of times some of these guides that it gives you are very interesting. So uh, for instance, I've seen the FAQ be really good in some cases, just automatically generating an FAQ. So it's looked at my documents and said, okay, what are the three orders of Avalon? Upon arrival, each initiate undergoes a ritual that reveals their affinity to one of the three orders. Order of Danu, Order of Bridget, Order of Mortigan. This is all of like the world building and stuff that I've done. Really cool stuff actually. And it does get most of this right. Uh, but let's say you just want to ask it questions. Basically, you can ask it any question and it'll scan through these sources and tell you uh, the answer. Now, a brief note, you are there is a limit to the number of sources that you can have um, that you can only have 50. But a way of getting around this is having a document, having one of your sources be a Google Doc that you can just add more and more notes to that Google Doc over time. And from there, you'll basically be able to put an infinite amount of data in there because you're using just one document that it can scan through. Otherwise, there is a limit to 50 here but that should be enough. It's also unclear whether this is using a RAG method of retrieval or if it's using the million context window that it has. This is using Google Pro 1.5, which is the model that has uh, the huge, enormous, like million token context window, which should in theory be able to always have all of your notes just stored in it so it can uh, use, you know, regular prompting to 
to access that rather than rag retrieval. Uh, rag retrieval seems to be good for some things, but it's not good for other things. It will often forget that certain parts, like it will go to a specific information that you're looking for and retrieve that, but it will sort of forget the context of everything else around that. And so it often gets things wrong because of that, which is why rag retrieval is not really a good prompting method if you want to have like a story Bible or something and be retrieving information from the story Bible or creating a wiki using the story Bible, you know, what have you. And through my testing, I often wonder if it is using a rag method of retrieval because sometimes it gets things weirdly wrong and other times it gets things like precisely correct. Uh, so it's really hard to say whether it's using just the context window or whether it's using rag. Uh, either way, there are issues that come up. Um, it's one of those things that I'm sure is going to get better as they iterate on this product. So let's go ahead and type something into the chat and say something like, who is Elaine? Uh, Elaine is one of the characters in this Arthurian shared universe who's kind of important. Elaine is the younger sister of Morgan Le Fay and the half sister of Arthur. While Morgan turns to black magic, Elaine attends a school for witches at Avalon. Her time at the school overlaps with the Lady of the Lake's arrival at the head of the school. The Lady of the Lake brings a young Lancelot to train at the school and Elaine and Lancelot begin a romance. So yeah, th this got it pretty much exactly correct. So it gave us a good summary of Elaine and I could uh, go with any of these suggested chats or any questions that I have. One thing that I have noticed is that the answers tend to be fairly brief. Like this right here is about as long as the answers get. So this tool is definitely not a tool that is optimized for writing. Uh, if you want to use it for writing, that's not really something I would use it for. It's more of a way of getting quick access to information that might be contained in your notes. So this is a really good option for story Bibles, uh, for just taking general notes and having them all in one place so that you don't have to search through all of your notes manually every time. You can just chat and say, you know, what was this thing that I marked down at some point? Uh, and it's usually able to retrieve that information cleanly and accurately for you. So let's look at some of the other notebooks that I've created here. One of the cool notes that I put together, I call it Coach Brandon. And all I did is I took the transcripts from the lectures that Brandon Sanderson has given online. And I took those transcripts and turned them into these documents here. So basically this is a resource on writing according to Brandon Sanderson, right? It's got all of the information that we have here. So if I wanted to say something like, how should I develop characters. It will scan through all of the documents that it's got and, and pull up information about characters. It actually gave me a pretty long response here. Um, so to make readers care about characters, establish empathy, provide interesting motivations and illustrate how ca characters change throughout the story. Readers are more likely to care about characters that they like that have compelling motivations or undergo transformation. To encourage readers to empathize with characters, portray them experiencing relatable struggles, yada, 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 ask why questions. For instance, instead of focusing on Luke Skywalker's goal of leaving his home planet consider why he wants to do so give characters flaws uh, we got information on dialogue here when developing multiple characters so there's lots of good information here about how to develop characters according to these lectures by Brandon Sanderson and you can do this with anything you just grab the transcript of any YouTube video on any particular topic just put those all in a document and then have the AI um, understand those documents and, and put them all here into a notebook and you've got a really cool resource that can basically help to coach you in specific situations that you might be in according to the information that's in all of those notes. So that's one use case that I've already found to be pretty useful. Uh, the next thing that I've done is I have tested putting all of my books inside of this. So uh, over here on the left hand side, we have under the sources, I have Roots of Creation. Uh, this is my complete series. I basically put all eight of my books into one document and stuck it here uh, because I wanted to test how well it could do with really, really long documents. And uh, it brought me up a notebook guide here that was very useful. This summary of the series, it was spot on that it automatically created. And I created an FAQ, which you can see here. And the FAQ ended up being really, really cool um, and really accurate too. So for instance, like what are brands and how do they work? You know, that's part of my magic system. Brands are magical symbols that grant individuals unique abilities. They are received through a process called branding performed by a gifter. You know, this is all accurate, which is pretty cool. But this is when I started to run into a few issues with this uh, tool. Because this document is so long, it did struggle to really understand 
understand the context for everything. So for instance, we could start typing and say, uh, give me a physical description of Jack. Jack's my main character and maybe it'll get it right this time. Okay, so yeah, it says the provided text does not contain a physical description of Jack. However, the text does indicate that Jack is female. Additionally, the text describes Jack's ability to use brands and magical power. So it wasn't even able to get it this time. The last time I asked, it gave me a physical description that was completely hallucinated and completely off with just one or two details that it did get right. So this is why I think it might be using a rag method of information retrieval rather than a uh, context window because if it had the context it would almost certainly be able to look at this and be like okay uh, it can kind of look at the entire series as a whole and say okay the, um, here are all the details about Jack and her physical description so let's try a different prompt here let's say give me a timeline of the events of this series and it's able to give me uh, an answer here this right here where it's giving me these specific dates it's able to do so because I actually included a reference to the timeline for that specific book. So this specific book had these dates listed as like, this is a timeline of events from this book. And that's why it's able to give me such good concrete information here. And then the rest of this, it's just like events from this book, events from that book, events, you know, and it doesn't really give me as good of information. And the reason for this is because I had these resources already uh, kind of fleshed out for this. And so one of the things that I have discovered so far that I think you want to keep in mind if you're creating like a story Bible or something inside of Notebook LM is that specifically crafted story Bible that has the details in an organized way is going to be better than just giving it the books by themselves. It doesn't appear to have a good way of actually looking through the books and gleaning tidbits of information as it goes along. Uh, but if you have, say, like an entry on who is Jack, this is Jack this is her physical description, it's able to process that information a lot better. Overall, I think Notebook LM is a great tool. If there was one thing I would add to it, other than the things I've mentioned so far, I would say it would be great to have like some kind of Chrome plugin or something where I can just hit a button and it will automatically add something to a note, uh, much like you can do with Evernote and some of the other note taking apps out there. But I do think we are entering a new era of note taking where it's not going to be so much a bunch of organized notes as it will be just uh, grabbing a bunch of information, stuffing it in a folder, and then using an AI tool like this one. Uh, there may be better ones that come along, but using a, a tool like this one to actually be able to access all of that information and retrieve whatever it is that you're looking for. And as these tools get better and better, I think that's really where note taking is going to go. And it'll be useful, especially if you're an author, to have all of your information kind of stored here inside of this tool or other the tools like it. But I do recommend actually getting sort of the Cliff Notes version of your books and including those in here instead of the whole entire book, because it doesn't seem to be able to process the whole book very well. And so if you want to have a way of getting that Cliff Notes version that gives you all of the information that the AI would want to know, uh, I have a video that I did all about how to create a story Bible with Novel Crafter. It's a fantastic resource if you want to create a story Bible for your book, specifically a story Bible that's kind of built with the intention of being used by a large language model like this to be able to create documents or retrieve information from them. So go check that video out right now and I will see you in the next video.